Over the years, Somali businessmen, both Kenyan nationals and others from Somalia, have set up businesses here, establishing the suburb as a trading hub in the Eastern African region. But Isli's reputation as a business district is being threatened. The Kenyan government has revoked the licenses of 86 individuals and businessmen, most of whom are Somali, on suspicion of funding the armed group Al-Shabaab. The government, under the leadership of His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, has put into place elaborate security and administrative measures to extinguish terrorism on Kenyan soil. These wide-ranging efforts include the freezing of all assets suspected to have been linked to the masterminds of the terrorist attack. Those whose licenses were revoked include 13 Somali money transfer companies, hotels and bus companies that operate between Nairobi and the northeast part of the country. The remittances the money transfer companies handle, for example, help millions of Somalis hurt by the conflict in their country, as well as refugees in Kenya. The government's decision to revoke licenses and also freeze the accounts of businessmen and other entities has hit at the heart of the Somali business community. Traders in Isli are already reporting a slump in business and now fearful for the future of their businesses. People in Isli are livid. They say they have suffered because of attacks as well as the government's efforts to restore security in their area. When an explosion happens, we are the victims, like businesses and residents, and the subsequent crackdown also affects us. In the past, it was police crackdown. Now we see it's a monetary crackdown. And, and therefore, it, we are very, very angry with this move, and we want the, the government to, as quickly as possible, rectify this situation. Government officials promise to enforce the measures. They say they are also seeking additional foreign intelligence and security help after the recent Garissa University massacre that killed 148 people, the worst attack in Kenya in years. Mohamed Adou Al Jazeera, Nairobi, Kenya. The UN has released a new report on the state of education around the world. It evaluates goals set 15 years ago to achieve education for all. So let's take a quick look at some of the report's key findings. A series of education targets were set at the World Education Forum in Dakar in 2000. One of the key goals was universal access to primary education. Sub-Saharan Africa is one of these success stories as it's expected to have 84% of its children enrolled in school by the end of the year. But as many as 58 million children are still out of classrooms around the world. New education targets are now being set for the year 2030. And UNESCO said an extra $22 billion a year will be needed to achieve them. Well, in Indonesia, the education minister there says the school system faces an emergency. Less than half of Indonesia's teachers have proper qualifications and students score among the lowest in the world in reading, mathematics and science tests. Step Vasten went to West Java to find out why. A few hours from the capital Jakarta and schools are in a deplorable state. Holes in the roof. First Java decided to build their own school after the government refused to provide one. Money ran out before they could even finish it. Nuraini dropped. 